Hi there, this is Dr. Margaret Siobhan Murphy-Zane from Children's Hospital Colorado to talk to you about infant hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia is a problem in infants where the ball and socket of the hip joint don't fit together right. You can either have a problem where the cup is shallow like a saucer or where the ball is not quite centered well in the cup or is actually even out of the cup, in which case we would call it a hip dislocation. A lot of what we talk about with hip dysplasia is based on a hip healthy position where the hips are flexed and the knees are far apart or what we call abducted. Sometimes I explain this to my patient's parents as positioning the baby as if she were riding a pony. I do live in Colorado. <laughs> this is a pretty natural position for the baby if you hold them chest to chest and they have a frog leg position or if you're holding them on the side of your hip and one leg is in front and the other is in the back. In any case, in a hip healthy position, the ball is centered in the middle of the cup and the cup will over time mold around the ball so that they have a nice tight fit. So if the legs are held really tight together, that's not a hip healthy position. In that instance, the ball is directed towards the roof of the cup and will actually deform the cup or cause it to bend so that the ball can escape the cup and dislocate. Babies who are breech or bottom down at birth are at risk for hip dysplasia because their legs are tight together in the mom's pelvis. Some cultures swaddle babies' legs tight together in the belief that they will make the legs grow straight and this can cause a high rate of hip dysplasia in toddlers. Some risk factors that increase hip dysplasia include being a firstborn baby girl, breech positioning, or a family history of hip dysplasia. Your pediatrician will check carefully for hip stability. If the baby's hip pops in and out on exam, there would be a concern that the hip ball and socket have not formed properly. Your pediatrician will also check the babies for uneven thigh folds, asymmetric range of motion, and unequal leg lengths. Any of these things and the history of breach would lead your pediatrician to refer your baby in for evaluation by a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. In our institution, it's our preference to see infants at six weeks old for their initial ultrasound, unless the pediatrician suspects the hip may be dislocated. Sometimes the baby will have a benign hip click where the hip is not popping in and out, but if this hip click persists, we also recommend that the pediatrician send the baby along to be seen by the pediatric orthopedic surgeon for an ultrasound at around six weeks of age. The gold standard treatment for hip dysplasia in infants who are less than six months old is a pavlic harness. We have used this harness for a long time and it has a very high rate of success in treatment of hip dysplasia. It's mostly worn full time and depending on how well the baby's hip responds when we follow them up on ultrasound, the baby will wear it for six to 12 weeks. In rare cases that don't improve promptly with the pavlic, we sometimes will try a different kind of brace that's more rigid called the rhino brace. The good news about infant hip dysplasia is that if it's picked up early and can be treated appropriately, the children do very, very well. There are some rare cases that are so severe that the hip stays out of the socket despite using the harness or brace. These kids may need a cast or even surgery in the first year or two of life. Lastly, even mild cases can cause major problems later in life if they're not caught early. In fact, mild hip dysplasia is a common cause of arthritis and hip replacement in adulthood. For more information, consult the Children's Hospital Colorado website.